In this section, I want to talk to you about bars. Not these bars, not those bars, but these bars. Bars, 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 bars. And so in honor of these bars, I've learned a bar joke for you. So a horse walks into a bar and the bartender says, you know, you've been in here a lot lately. Do you think you might be an alcoholic? And the horse says, I don't think I am. And it promptly disappears out of existence. Boom, you've been decarded. So, base address registers, what are they? Well, base address registers are a location that specifies some sort of optional place where a part of the hardware, a PCI device, is going to be exposed to the rest of the system. Could be via memory mapped I.O., could be via port I.O. The bars are read-write, and it's the responsibility of the BIOS to program them in the context of the overall memory map. So if it's going to program, you know, one particular bar and then the next particular bar, it needs to make sure those don't overlap with each other or any other devices on the system. Because when you're accessing some particular port I.O. or memory mapped I.O. range, you want to make sure it's going to the device that you expect. Now, obviously, it's showing that there's space for six base address registers, each of which is 32 bits long. And that can be used for things that are going to be mapped inside of a 32-bit address range in the context of memory mapped I.O. But you can also take and combine things that are adjacent in order to create bars that specify a 64-bit address if you need to base something in a base address register at a location above 4 gigabytes. So if you were to use a tool like Read Write Everything or Chipsec in order to go read out the PCI configuration address space at the relevant offset for base address registers, and if you saw something non-zero, this is the way that you would interpret what the BIOS had written there. Now, it's not just the case that you just take whatever value there and that's the base address of some memory mapped I.O. or port I.O. It has particular bits that require interpretation. So first of all, because they're in the case of memory mapped I.O., there are four least significant bits have special values and special meanings. That means you would take whatever 32-bit value there was and you would mask it with all Fs and a zero in order to remove the least significant four bits. And that would give you the actual base address that would be used in this case in memory mapped I.O. Now the least significant bit being zero specifically says that this is going to be a memory mapped I.O base address register. So it's saying I want this base address as calculated here to be used within the physical address range. Now these next two bits right here will specify whether or not this address should be treated as a 32-bit address or a 64-bit address. So if it's 1-0 then that means this could be inside the 64-bit address space which means you're going to need to use two consecutive bars and if it was 0-0 then you were talking about a 32-bit address which would therefore fit in here as mentioned before, 64-bit addresses means that you need to take two consecutive bars, two consecutive 32-bit values, and fill in an address in this portion and then also in portion of the next bar. So the way that's actually calculated is that, you know, whatever, let's say it was bar zero, and you would take and mask off the least significant four bits as usual, and then you would, you know, add that to the next bar, shifted by, masked with all F, so basically, or just not masked at all, uh, shifted by 32 bits, which is basically the most significant 32 bits of that 64-bit value. So the bar 0 is the least significant 32 bits, and the bar 1 is the most significant 64 bits. On the other hand, if you read back the 32-bit value from the base address registering, you found that the least significant bit was 1. This is indicating that this is actually a port I.O. base address register. So it's going to be an address within the port I.O. range. So when we were talking about fixed I.O. versus variable I.O., this is a means by which PCIe hardware can create a variable range to be used for port I.O. So again, because there's two special bits on the least significant bits, you would take a base address that you see in the bar, you would mask it with FFFF and C in order to get rid of the least significant two bits, and that would be the actual port that you would start accessing memory on. Now the PCIe SIG does not actually recommend using port I.O. because it's a very limited space and fragmented. So generally speaking, most devices will use memory mapped I.O., but go ahead and, you know, check your device later. You'll see whether or not you have any port I.O. available through PCI devices.
So returning to this picture of Miss Frizzle accessing the various address spaces, now we can understand that for this particular NIC, if it has a 256 byte configuration address space, or maybe it's 4K if it's using PCIe extended address space, if it has this 256 bytes within that space, within the standardized header, are going to be bars. And so the driver could set bar zero to be some sort of memory mapped I.O., which would allow access to some sort of internal information from this particular device. Or it could set bar one to be port I.O., in order to, again, just access some other different portion of this device. Or maybe they could overlap and they're just two different ways to access the same information. Or maybe there could be none of them at all. And, you know, it's all up to the particular device manufacturer. It's all up to how they make, how they intend to make a driver interact with their particular hardware. But that leaves us with one question still. And that is, you know, I've listed thus far TBD bytes of NIC memory mapped IO space. So how do we determine? How does a BIOS find out how big of a chunk of the memory mapped IO space that it should reserve, for instance, for talking to this device? So I want to welcome you to the wacky world of bar sizing. So the BIOS doesn't get to just say like, okay, well, you get hex 1000 bytes and you get hex 2000 bytes. It has to ask the device, how many bytes do you actually need? How much are you going to be exposing to memory mapped IO or port IO? And the way that it actually requests the information about the size is that it writes all ones in binary or all Fs in hex into this 32-bit value of a bar. If the device actually has something that it wants to expose via memory mapped I.O. or port I.O., the device will return something not equal to all the ones that were just written in there. If it's still all ones, then that means that this thing has, you know, no space that it wants to map. But if it's non all Fs, then that means the bits that were set to zero, the device is basically saying these bits that are set to zero, these are valid address bits that you can set. These are things where I don't care if you go ahead and set these when you're accessing my memory mapped I.O. once you decide what base address you're going to put it at. So one way of thinking about that is if this particular device returned three F's and five zeros, the, you know, I don't care and you may set bits are, you know, zero and FFFF. So all these bits are the ones that are don't care and can be used for addresses. So if we interpret it that way, then it's basically saying you can create an address within my memory mapped IO range from zero to FFFF, so five Fs. And so that means that if the indexes of the addresses are zero to five Fs, that means the total size is one and five zeros, which is one megabyte. So basically this would be a device saying, you know what, I need one megabyte of memory mapped IO space. So you can think about these bits that get set to zero as do not care bits, as address bits, or you could just think of it as the device returns the two's complement of the size that it actually wants reserved. So you can see that if we took this value Fs, we flip the bits like this and we add one, we get this one megabyte size. So it's ultimately the two's complement of the total size needed. But there is one more register that is of importance when dealing with these memory mapped IO base address registers or port IO base address registers. And that is the command register at offset four, two bytes large inside the PCIe header, header. And that has bits 0 and 1, which have to do with whether this device should be enabled for access within the I.O. address space, port I.O., or the memory space. So basically, the BIOS could set a base address register, but unless these command bits were set, then it wouldn't actually be enabled for port I.O. or memory mapped I.O. And you can actually see this on a device that is fully enabled and working. If you go toggle these bits off, then all of a sudden the memory mapped I.O. range will disappear from physical memory and likewise for port I.O. Of course, if you do that, the driver is probably going to have a pretty bad time. It's going to stop working. Whatever device you're interacting with is probably going to crash. 